I'm going to start recording this. And as we get on to close to five and a little bit beyond, people will be uh, logging in as we end our workday here. I know it's uh, late in the evening for you um, in, yeah. in Madrid. So thank you so much for your, uh, your time no and be able to spend no. and share your ideas. Uh, and we look forward to uh, Felix Gonzalez here from Madrid Clinica Bavaria. Uh, he's going to be talking yeah, to Bavaria. us. Bavaria, sorry. Uh, we're going to be talking to us with, um, with respect to ICLs and more specifically how uh, we should be looking at vault in perhaps a new way. Is that right, Felix? Right. Okay. So. Okay. It's all yours. Okay. I'll, I will say my, my screen. Mm. And Felix has been implanting ICLs for infected lenses for over 20 years, a high volume uh, surgeon, so we look forward to his experience. I think you have this, my screen there, okay? Yes. And you can. And if I can ask patient, I'm sorry, patient, people who have joined us that have not muted their, uh, their computers to please go ahead and mute themselves, please. Okay, perfect. So I start a good evening, every, everybody there. Uh, thanks, uh, Dr. Bai, for inviting me to this conference. Uh, I've been working really in fatty procedure chamber lens uh, for 20 years, and I have focused on then much of my concerns and as ophthalmologists and, and surgeons. So thank you again for allowing me sharing with you my studies of the dynamic concepts of polling implantable clamor lens. These are my financial disclosures. Oh, sorry, it's not working. I don't know where. Let, let me check it. Yeah, okay, there's. Why is ICL important and why it has gotten my attention? The, look, look, look at this study, this study. The table showed the trends of myopia and high myopia from 2000 to 2050. We are now here. The green line corresponds to myopia and the black line below to high myopia. We have duplicated the number of myopic people in the world since this century, and we will duplicate again the current number in 2050. So we are talking about close to 5 billion of nerves in the world in 30 years. In the other table on the right, the green line represents the prevalence of myopia today, about 30%, but it's expected to reach the 65% only in 30 years more. In this context, the vision implantable glamour lens, ICL, is the facet lens most commonly used in the world. The ICL is manufactured by Star Surgical. Last year, we did the million implants worldwide. Spain, Spain is the first situated in the European market. Around 10% of the refractive surgery we do are facet lens, mainly ICL. Facet lenses have also captured the attention of many scientific publications since the second half of the 20th century. Posterior chamber the factor lens began to appear in the literature in the 80s, and first ICL publication was in 1996. Uh, since then, it, it has been increasing the interest raised by this lens, reflecting in the, normal, in the number of annual publication. I've been working from 1999 in Clinical Oviedo, an ophthalmic institute with multiple plants in Spain and Europe, handling a, a large volume of uh, patients. It was in 1993 when the panoramic surgeon Christian Scorpic from Vienna, Paolo Pesando and Vicenzo Aceto from Italy, and Roberto Saldivar from Mendoza, Argentina, implanted the first ICL prototypes in human healthy eye. But it was really the, the later Saldivar, the true developer of all the prototypes. And it was him who was just suggesting and introducing in collaboration with the STAR the new advance in the design of the ICL. From 1994 to 2017, different prototypes and models have been happening in time. Towards the end of 1998, the posterior curvature radius of the lens was modified, increasing the posterior curvature and separated it from the crystalline lens, model B4 once more. Also at this time, astigmatism was finally addressed with the first toric ICL implanted by to Tobias Neuhan in, in Munich. In 2010, the lens changed its packaging in physiological serum to VSS, and it no longer re inside the, into the eye, so, so sites were modified to the current ones. But what was one year later in 2011, when one of the most important milestones in ICL design occurred, when uh, the, the, the developing of the central port uh, uh, 
in, in the center of the optic. This optical center of 360 microns holds, allows a more natural flow of the aqueous humor without the need to perform ideotomies or anidiotomy, also reducing the incidence of crystalline lens opacities. Finally, three years ago, in 2017, the optical tone was enlarged in the model, model EVO Plus, seeking to reduce these photopsias generated by scotopic pupil size. The current available my model is the BCN ICL EVO Plus and EVO that reach up to 18 diopters for myopia and up to six for astigmatism. They maintain for size 12.1, 12.6, 13.2, and 13.7, which correspond to its lens in millimeters. Main advantage of the uh, of ICL are that they, they maintain crystalline lens integrity, therefore its accommodative function. Its implantation has not been associated with retinal complication. Being implanted in the posterior chamber of the eye, its nodal points are very close to the crystalline lens, which produces a magnification of the retinal image compared to other options for correcting my myopia. Due to the quality of its material, colamer, there have been no cases of intracular deterioration. Both invents and in vivo tests have shown superb optical quality. Optical aberration related to corneal refractive laser treatment do not occur. Implantation is a potential reversible process. And the surgical technique is relatively simple and standardized. You have seen in the video an ICL implantation during the course of this work. The video is not working quite well, okay, but believe me, it's, it's, it's so fast than, than that. The surgical technical, it's a, a relatively simple and preserving the cornea for the future that is very important especially for future lens treatments and enable the possibility of corneal treatments associated with fucking lens then it calls biopic. Corrects a wide range of refractive errors with very predictable refractive outcomes and quickly achieved. Traditionally the vision ICL is implanted in the horizontal meridian supported by the salary sulcus but would be uh, bolt would be definite as the, definite as the distance between the posterior surface of the facial lens and the anterior surface of the crystalline lens. The concept regarding bolting was described for the first time by Dr. Michael Diaz from Kansas, a STARS clinical investigator. In this uh, excerpt of a medical file from 1995, courtesy of Dr. Saldivar, we can see Dr. Diaz's notes mentioning and grading the, the bolt. The ball depends on the biometric characteristics of the anterior segment, the length of the implanted lens, and the design of the intricate bolt of, of the lens. And we as surgeons can only add in choosing the ICL size with a handicap of having only four sides for it. The ICL size is calculated by the horizontal white weight and anterior chamber depth, following the recommendation of the manufacturer. This is the classical formula from the start, but some surgeons also use to adjust the size of the ICL considering other parameters such as the crystalline S rise, the angle to angle, the anterior chamber wide, or sulcus to sulcus among other. Following the STAR recommendation in the Ocos Online calculator, will be, we will be suggested a size and a power lens that we can choose. Some surgeons follow their own criteria, Personally, I'm, I'm working on the developing of the software for the post-operative assessment and calculation of the ICL with the CASIA 2 front domain. And this is the calculation screen based on the formulas of Nakamura and Shimizu currently available only for Asiatic market. It is interesting this online calculator developed by Dan Reinstein, freely available, where it's possible to provide the available measurements and the calculator will suggest the size to be implanted. But clinical evidence tells us that there is an unpredictable in the calculation of the ICL size, resulting in inappropriate bolt in some cases. Factors contributing to the existence of a certain uh, unpredictability for a proper calculation of bolt could be the use of nomograms to calculate lens size based on white to white measurements, in this study from Guber, uh, he compared the BS of most common device used to measure the white-to-white, -white, finding significantly statistically difference between them. 
we add to this the demonstrating no correlation between the horizontal white to white and the sulcus to sulcus where the land is located, white to white does not seem to be a good calculation parameter for sizing ICLs. The only way we have so, so far to address sulcus to sulcus is through UVM, but the measurements we get lack, we get lack proper reliability and reproductibility. In addition, the attics of the ICLs are not always found in the, in the ciliary sulcus. Sometimes they fall or impact in the, in the ciliary body or even bend under the, the iris pigment epithelium, affecting the resulting ball. Likewise, the structural anormalities in the ciliary sulcus, such as salary six, may also cause change in, in the ball. So nowadays, ICL sizing is not yet completely resolved. We have different ways to, to measure the bulk. We can do the first approximation, making a subject measurement in the slip lamp. But today, other objective measurement methods are necessary, but they will study the bulk, highlighting mainly the, the OCT. Although it's not completely defined, the ideal bulk has been accepted between 250 to 750 microns measuring by, by OCT. In this classical Alfonso classification, which has been modified over time, a ball between 100 and 1000 microns could be considered in a safe range if peripheral contact with the crystalline lens, intracular pressure, angle, iris, and pupil safe are monotary. But since Vanessa Petrel's uh, partner in studies in 2004, we know that ball varies under accommodation with pupil sites under different ambient light conditions. This consecutive, in this consecutive OCT frames taken for us in 2013 during the drop pupil dilatation, we could observe how ball was varying from mesotic size to pharmacological medresses in a hyperoptic ICL implanted eye, doubling the ball, the final ball value. But we also know that the ball changed in the post-operative period. So Kojima in 2010 studied how wall was modifying during the first year after ICL implantation. They observed that eyes with low and moderate wall show with few changes after this ICL implantation, but the height wall tended to decrease over time in stabilization at three months after surgery. In the three years uh, follow-up of subjective vaulting assessment in myopic ICL implanted eye publicized by Alfonso, they conclude that whereas high ball tends to decrease over time, moderate and low ball maintaining quite stable over time. Over time. And far entangled uh, the, the scheme regarding the change undergone by the ball, I change with time and, and that can also affect the, the ball. So we know that the horizontal sulcus to sulcus decrease over time and anterior chamber depth decrease as well due to the aging process of the crystalline lens. So we have seen that the ball is, uh, is in constant and from that, that pers perspective, I want to show you what they have called the dynamic concepts of ball. Dynamics theorize that phenomena of matter are due to the action of force. So in the following slides, I will try to show you why the ball should be considered from a dynamic point of view. This is a dynamic anterior segment OCT of an eye implanted with a myopic ICL model EVO plus. When we modify the external condition going on from a scotopic ambient to a photopic lighting ambient, we observe how a significant variation of the value of the central and peripheral ball occurs. <coughs> Observing and measuring this ball variation that occurs when varying in external light condition, we publicized a couple of years ago this paper where we introduce the concept of dynamic ball, defining new measurements paradigm param parameters that describe in a more physiological way the movement of the FACI off and the entry segment. For this, uh, we define it the ball range, a new measurement concept, but we consider a paradigm size shift in the ball assessment in posterior champion FACI off. 
when we are examining the OCT of an eye with an implanted eye, what, what are we really reading when we measure the bulb? Traditionally, we are measuring the central bulb value, defining that the physical distance between the back surface of the facet IO and the anterior surface of the crystalline lens. In this case, taking the OCT in photopic ambient, the bulb was 529 microns. But is this, is this real? Or in, in other words, that, does this eye always have the same volt? Here we introduce two new dynamic concepts for measuring the ball. Ball interval that refers to central ball values measured in maximal physiological midriasis and meiosis expressed in microns after light induces pupil change. In this size, both, both ball intervals will be 775 and 529 microns in scotopic and photopic ambient light condition, respectively. Ball range, that is the calculated difference between the two values obtained after ball interval measurement, is praised as an absolute value in microns. In this example, they mention a value of 246 microns. In our published series, in, in, in ball range was 167, plus and minus 70 microns. With this being through peak range, you see more than 300 microns in some cases. These images were obtained by the Casio One, a three-dimensional semi-dynamic dynamic OCT device manufactured by Tomei that is able to acquire sequential OCT image of the Android 7 at a rate of 8 frames per, frames per second and record in a video of 15 seconds of duration. In our work and methodology developed for this study during the dynamic exploration, the study eye kept the vision at an internal dot target while the fellow eye was exposed during five seconds to an internal, external, sorry, pen light signing, followed by an ocular occlusion. Thus, by the consensual nuclear light reflex, a meiosis in address in the study eye was achieved. Now, in the last year, we are working with the Cassia 2 device that provides a higher image uh, resolution. For a dynamic analysis of the anterior segment, we are testing a beta version built in software to acquire an OCT video made of a sequence of frames that incorporates the control for internal automatic light as a result of our studies. With both devices, in a second step, the accurate image were processed. For this proposed uh, frozen image of one frame was obtained when the pupil got its minimum sight and in the moment of maximum midriasis, and the parameters shown in the screen in, in the screen were studied. In this video image, you can see how this device works. In a dark room, we start the, the imaging, followed by internal light inducing the pupil restriction, and after five seconds, recovering the pupil midriasis. Then processing the video file, we obtain the OCT, we obtain the OCT frames at maximum diuresis and meiosis in order to analyze all the anterior segment parameters. Delving into the dynamic concepts of, of vault, the next question would be uh, what factor influences the dynamics of the vault? We started studying the, the crystalline lens movement, which was the subject of a paper in the Journal of Refractive Study last, last year. Uh, Baikov in, in, in 2006 defined the, the crystalline lens rise at the distance between the anterior pole of the crystalline lens and the line joining the two opposite iridocorneal angles along the horizontal corneal diameter. In a series of 111 myopic eyes implanted with a central pore ICL, we observed that the mean crystalline lens rise increased from adresses to midriasis in, in 59 plus and minus 16 micro, 60 microns. And again, please look, look, look at the range. Uh, there, there were eyes where the crystalline lens rise was modified about 250 microns. If we consider the bold in the philosophy, the philosophical dynamics the definition as a corporal war, the crystalline lens rail will represent one of the simple elements that participate in that, in that force. Coming back again to our eyes, it's obvious that there are more factors influencing the dynamics of the world. And one of very evident is the role that uh, iris and pupillary movements play in modifying the, the bolt.
We launched a prospective study to dynamically assess variation in pupil diameter induced by change in brightness and myopic eyes implanted when ICL with a central pore. Using the same working method explained above, we examined eyes properly and after implanting the ICL three months later. Here you have the study described and described, descriptive, sorry. The sample comprised PTIs from 27 patients. The mean age was 33 years old, mostly spheric ICL model, Ego Plus. The most implanted site was 13.2. These are the pre-op pupil site measurements. And this three months after ICL implantations. Analyzing this difference between pre and post op pupil size in meiosis in the right table, emidresis in the left side, we found that the increase of 0.24 millimeters in pupil size after ICL implantation in emidresis was statistically significant. But not all implanted size increased their pupil size. All the eyes you can see in the blue area uh, not modified or even decreased the, the scotopic, their scotopic pupil. So concretely, concretely in 30% of eyes, the pupil image is remained the same or decrease after ICL implantation. What clinical repercussions can the pupil site have in eyes implanted by ICL with the ICLs? There are some types uh, of dyspotoxia affecting these eyes. Veteran refractive surgeons know one kind of linear dyspotoxia reported by some patients in their lower visual field associated with peripheral laser ileotomies or interpretive ileotomy, which, was, which were necessary during implantation of previous model. Since these many hours are no longer required with the advent of the central pore, this sort of dyspotoxia have, have now disappeared. However, really in the, the center of the optical phone has repercussion and new dyspotoxia has been report, have been reported. This type of dyspotoxia kind may occur alongside another type that is perceived by some patients, especially under scotopic light condition, and that originates as a, result, as a result of the relationship between pupil diameter, imidriasis, and the size of the optical zone of the, of the fatty oil. In, if the diameter of the pupil is thick, is thick the boundaries of the optical zone, then two different images could be generated on the retina. This out of focus image can cause dyspotoxia. Patients complain of halos under these circumstances and sometimes even in mesopic ambient light, for example, during the use of electronic device, which produce a ghost image. These are three real cases, and in all the, in, in all the eyes, the pupil overcoming the limits of the lens optical thumb. In the first, this photosia was imperceptible to the patient. In the second case, the patient was bothered by the night hours, but was not prevented from living a normal life. She was very satisfied with the refractive result. However, in the third case, this photoxia was completely intolerable. It appeared even when working with the computer. Here's the, the, the drawing uh, he made me, he made to me. It was necessary to explain the lens. Uh, nevertheless, there are very relevant clinical facts. In about half of implanted eyes, scotopic pupil exceeded the optical zone of three months. In these scatter plots, we can observe fairly same degree of correlation between wall measures and difference in pupil size under different light conditions. The increase in pupil size between midriasis and meiosis tends to be larger the wider the vault, both in the scotopic and photopic light condition. This figure shows uh, the change of pupil size in diuresis and in neodysis after surgery in different ball groups, less than 500 microns and more than 500 microns measuring in, in midiasis. The pupil size at three months after implantation for an ICL tends to be larger, both in the scotopic and photopic light condition when the wall is higher. Observing the difference in pupil size between pre and post-operative uh, in midiasis, with the ball measurement, we, don't, we did not find any correlation. The ball range, that is the difference between the ball imidriasis and ball imidriasis, doesn't seem to be related to pupil size difference. The second simple element affecting the force in our ball dynamics will be the iris pushing down the, the ICL. 
we have seen the role of the crystalline lens and the, the pupil in this, but is, is there anything else? It seems logical to think that if the, if the iris pushes down of the fucking, on the fucking EL and the lens shortens the, the space with the ICL, there must be some lateral expansion of the lens haptics in the sulcus. This, although we cannot yet actually determine, is very likely to occur given the soft nature of the sulcus and sari body. If we have a look at the angle to angle values of the data obtained in our study with more than 100 eyes, we will see that angle to angle increased significantly in meiosis with respect to its scotopic value. We can think that this widening of the eye in meiosis could be reproduced a little below at the level of the ciliary sulcus, enlarging the lateral space where the lens have depressed. So, uh, to the two vertical movement described, it will be a, uh, at a, a third horizontal displacement movement, helped by the lateral expansion, expansion of the eye in, in meiosis. This will be the, the third simple element affecting the fourth in our ball dynamics. We have the four uh, that combine, combining these three elements, the crystalline lens, the iris and the expansion of the eye, in, and probably some other factor as the intrinsic ball of the ICL for its power or its thickness, we obtain the dynamics of the, of the ball. So we already know that the ball is dynamic, eh? but there is another new concept that also concerns the ball. It is relativism, clinically relativism. I mean, the philosophical definition of relativism, relativism states that contents are subject to a variety of interpretations relative to difference in perception and consideration in consideration. What is the difference between these, these both eyes? You notice there is a significant difference in the crystalline lens rise. The crystalline lens on the right is very flat, very negative, and that is partly responsible for the height ball. However, the pupillary dynamics are very good because the iris is inserted both and allows it to move in a very horizontal plane with respect to the ICL. In these two examples, the ball is in the scotopic condition is very similar, but when the light is projecting and the pupil is closed in the left eye, it maintains an appropriate distance of 179 microns with the crystalline lens, while in the left eye, it approaches much more to it. Again, there is an important difference in the crystalline lens rise. In the eye on the right side of the screen, it's about 500 microns, which for a myopic eye means a very building lens. Therefore, again, two eyes that could be considered similar in terms of ball, this result may be relative when we consider the, the dynamics of the ball and other biometric parameters. Again, two cases, two cases more. On the left the screen, we have an eye with an central ball that seems quite fine. However, we have two factors that crucially influ influence the safety of this ICL, a very prominent costal lens race again, and a high-powered myopic lens, where the peripheral meniscus in the ICL is very wide, contacting with the lens. In contrast, in the right eye, although the ball is very low, it remains the same both ventrally and peripherally during the light ambience, uh, all, uh, during all light ambience, with a very unusual ball range of zero. Therefore, despite being an, an intraocular uh, lens very close to the lens, we could consider that it's a safe board. In the case of, in the, case of the LED, due to the peripheral contact, we had to exchange the ICL for a larger size. Finally, two samples with a very low ball time meiosis. In these cases, if we perform a static measurement in um, a lit in a room, in a dark ambient, we could incorrectly consider that the bolt on the left of the screen is fine and, for example, choose the same size for the fellow eye. So we already know that, that the ball is essentially dynamic and some factor can contribute to this dynamic, but ball is also related we are used to hear about ball in an absolute number, but we have to get used to framing that ball within a context 
and trying to individualize it according to the biometric and dynamic characteristics of each particular eye. That's the only way to understand the world and try to advance in its knowledge. And to achieve this, uh, we can assist in ourselves with this type of resource and their same OCT technology. This device provides a, a high resolution real time ima imaging, enable, uh, enabling accurate identification at the exact moment of maximum physiological meiosis and mediastis. We have now the possibility of measuring a wide variety of biometric parameters. And this is very important. They allow a clear understanding of the dynamic nature of the fatty uh, IOS ball. In future, uh, when algorithms are automatized, they will give us more chance to estimate the size of the fatty of the fatty IOL. Yeah, please me, let me let me do one more remark. As we can clearly see in the videos during physiological pupil dynamic, the anterior surface of the of the fatty lens has a permanent contact with the pigmented iris epithelium. The EICL shows a marked anterior posterior movement and pushed by the iris, resulting in a decreased wall value after pupil constriction. I would like to emphasize that as top medias of daily pupil change in the continued iris rowing, pigment, pigment dispersion in ICL implant is not a clinical issue. This, without any doubt, is related to the material, the collamer which the lens are made. So in conclusion, uh, first and foremost, our funding underline how anterior ocular segment is a continuous motion according to the intensity of external ambient light, which modulates the measurement of post-operative ball. Ball value is an entirely static concept. It should be supplemented by ball range and ball interval, a wider dynamic concept which more closely resembles the physiological phacic uh, lens movement into the eye. Pupillary and crystalline lens dynamics are key features of this movement, where the forward position protrusion of the crystalline lens dome should not be ignored. Future studies may be warranted to investigate the clinical significance of all range. This may be, this may be easy to, with dynamic ICT, I, I, anterior cell male OCT device. I conclude with this. I, I still never say that everything is relative, uh, quite the contrary, the speed of light in space is absolute. But what Einstein did believe in was imagination and curiosity. So thank you very much for your kind attention. Now, if you have any questions, it will be a pleasure for me to, to respond to, to them. OK, I will go out to the screen. OK. OK, thank you very much. So that was um, definitely adds a little bit more um, spice to uh, the interpretation of all and I think it takes uh, us from our classic um, understanding of vault as a simple number uh, to have to now incorporate various aspects in terms of uh, the, the parameters that you mentioned so my question to you is this um, for people who are starting off with ICLs um, and, you know, uh, I think we're taught certain things about how we should look at patients as possible candidates. We're taught certain things on how what we should do intraoperatively. But this is an important thing that we should look at in terms of how uh, patients are doing afterwards, which will further, you know, enhance our experience on selecting patients in the future and intraoperative uh, uh, things that we do. So what is your recommendation for uh, sizing? Um, uh, what kind of dev diagnostic devices would you recommend um, for the beginner or no novice uh, ICL surgeon? One hour more. Okay. <laughs> so uh, it's it, it's it's uh, the first recommendation I, I will I will do it. It's really uh, just to perform, just to to have in mind that the, the ball is dynamic. Okay. And you have to train it. You have to 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 understand it in in a context. And the anterior segment is the, is the, is the context. Okay, so that's that's only to have in mind. Okay, it's uh, obviously no no no. This 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 device are really very very expensive. And no no 
no or every every sergeant can can have this in, in the clinic okay but uh, it, it, it first thing if you want to measure properly the bolt you must do at least in 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 meiosis because in meiosis is when the when the when the the bolt the sorry the yes the bolt is 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 lower and when the the, the lens is is closer to the crystalline lens so uh, mm, it's important to do the, the OCT, for example, with a pen light signing externally, uh, just with the phone or with a, a pen light. Uh, and that's very easy. And you will see the, the bolt uh, in, in meiosis. Also, you want to want the, the measurement in, in, in madriasis or in, in scotopic ambient uh, light, but you can uh, do it in a dark room, okay? So uh, that's, uh, that's the first, just for safety, just to consider the bolt uh, with uh, the static bolt in, uh, in with a pen light, external pen light. It, it would be my one, one first advice. Second is to consider um, Scott is here. Okay, Scott Barnes is, a, an, is the medical director of uh, uh, of a Star, and uh, the, the the formula has some uh, some weakness. Uh, I have to say that I am completely sure. And, and the, the, we, we are, we, I, I pulled that in the last year in the, one of the, the paper I mentioned it. When we have a very uh, a big ICD, uh, when, they, when the anterior chamber depth is very big, it's because the, the crystalline lens rise is flat. So in, in the, the formula of stars gives Uh, some jumps of of, uh, of uh, white to white. He gives us different uh, what one size higher or one size lower. We have a big uh, ICD. The formula gives us a bigger ICL, and is in we we have to do the opposite. We have a ICD very high. We have to insert a lower size. That's the reason because uh, with this formula we have a very a lot of uh, of high bolt. Okay, so that's another question. We have to consider the anterior chamber depth. And also, it's the same when you have a narrow anterior chamber depth. If you have a narrow anterior chamber depth, it's because the crystalline lens rise, rise is bulging. There is a, there is this, uh, this uh, inverse relationship. So if you, if you insert a lower lens, a small lens, you will be very close to the crystalline lens. So my advice, is just to consider also the ACD because sometimes if you can you measure the crystalline lens rise, perfect. But if you cannot do because you don't have these this machines, they, they, they are very segment OCTs, you have to consider the ICD. And also, and, and the, the third question is, uh, the central pore is really fantastic. Uh, we, it avoid uh, the, the cataracts uh, and now I, I, in the last uh, start uh, uh, meeting, express meeting in Paris, uh, they, they start uh, give me the award for, for the presentation, for the best presentation of session about uh, about the the cataracts and about uh, I studied uh, five, uh, five years uh, implanted implanted eyes, very very low, less than 100 microns uh, volt in meiosis uh, eyes, and what with in more than five years. I studied 24 uh, eyes. Only one eyes was developing a very little cataract in the anterior in the anterior uh, pole of the of the crystalline lens. So, really, there is no cataract after the this this kind of uh, uh, of, uh, of surgery, and uh, we, we 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 can be we we can breathe uh, because uh, really it's quite difficult to develop cataract even if we have a very low bolt. So I remember Scott mentioning that. So that's interesting that after five years in patient, uh, these patients uh, who had a vault of less than 100 microns, that right. right, one person ended up getting maybe a visually insignificant uh, cataract, right. correct? Correct, correct. And, and I'm, now I'm, 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 I have this, this work. It's uh, in, the, in the Journal of Cataract Practice Survey. They are... Uh, reviewing it, uh, so I expect uh, it to be published in the, in the next month. And it's very interesting because uh, it, it, it's uh, uh, we can demonstrate with cases what we know in the clinic. 
in the clinic in the last nine years. I've never have this, uh, I never planted a, an ICL with uh, with central port. I never uh, for for cathars. I mean, yeah, okay. Yeah, so that central port seems to be a big game changer. Yeah, uh, for multiple reasons. Okay, mm -hmm. and, and so also, mm -hmm, sorry. Go ahead, please. No, I, I mean that, uh, but I always say, I say when, when, when uh, the, the central port, of course, is, is fantastic and works very well, but it's not free yeah. to, to do a hole in the, in the, in the optical phone, uh, of course. So the most of the patients, you know, the, the surgeon who, who implanted uh, ICLs know that always they complain about uh, nalo, dyspotopsia. Sometimes it's very difficult. I'm working quite well, quite, quite a lot in that, and I, I'm trying to publish a, a, another paper about that. The relationship between the, the the boundaries of the optical zone and the pupil size of the of the ICL. So sometimes in clinic it's very difficult to uh, to separate with the dyspotopsia from the scotopic condition than from the from the from the from the central central hole, but the dysphotopsia are 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 there. Okay, so we have to consider. I have to explain not not too much. I think no more than three or four patients the ICL because the the alloys were completely intolerable, and sometimes it's for for the for the for the central port, and sometimes it's for the for the boundaries. But always there are personally type A, a so personally special persons who. Mm. Really, and they are not satisfied or with, with nothing. <laughs> okay. And so, can you lead us through your thought process post-operatively when you see a patient who, say, in um, in uh, a physiologically um, uh, myosed uh, pupil, the vault is say small. Um, at what point do you consider? Um, saying this lens has to come out and put in a new lens, or, or what, what happens if there's a big vault? At what point do you say, at how many weeks after surgery, at what point do you say, you know, I think it's time that we remove the lens? You, I, I, I don't understand very well. Do you mean when? when... So after your vault measurements, um, at what point uh, would you yeah. be comfortable yeah. making a decision to re to exchange a lens or remove a lens. Okay, you, you mean uh, as, uh, you mean after the in the in the in the in the, in the short postoperatively? Uh, you mean in the in the in the next days after the surgery? Okay, so right. I don't want. To leave, uh, I, I always said when when we implanted I, uh, ICL, we had to be prepared to explant it. Then. That's the, that's the play. Uh, that's the that's the rules of the game. Okay, so uh, uh, in. It's, it's not very common to have to explant, but uh, uh, what is very common is to, to, to have to change the, the size of the ICLs between eyes. So that's the reason because, and I publish also that, that uh, uh, the number of, of uh, in the diff, in, in what, how many the bolt increase when you go for a for low bolt in the first side, how much increase the bolt in the second night when you use a higher ICL size and how much uh, the ball decrease when you started uh, when the first side has a high ball and we implanted a lower size in the second eye. It's 200 when you go with a higher side and when you go in a 500 around 550 when you go from from this uh, from from high ball to in the in the first side to the second eye. Okay, so uh, it's not very common to have to implant. But personally, I don't like if I see a patient with less than 100 microns in meiosis, I try to explant for a, a higher site. And in the second eye, I implant and the, the, a bigger site. So I implant first a bigger site and the second, I compare the result, and then probably I will change the first eye. Because even I know that uh, it's quite safe to leave a vault uh, below 100 microns in meiosis, I'm not uh, I'm not satisfied for that. So to usually it's plan. And the same for the for the, for the high bolt. For the high bolt, you have to compare the you you have to consider the angles. You have to consider also the dynamic of the pupil, especially the dynamic of the pupil. The mm -hmm. dynamic of the pupil is fine. You can leave 1,300, not matter, right? because you have a very very a, a big anterior chamber depth, and you have a very flat 
uh, or even negative crystalline lens rise, the, the, the iris is going very horizontal, so no problems for that. Now, uh, with the calculation with the Tomei, I'm, I'm, I'm working with Tomei to develop the, 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 this device. It's, it's incredible, the Cassia 2, because it's, it's, they, they have very advanced software in, in ICL, and I, in, in, I'm incorporating new things, and it will be in the market in the future. So um, we can, uh, we can uh, really predict uh, quite well these cases and, 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 and avoid height, hyper volt or high volts and even avoid a low, low bolt. So, um, but uh, in, in, when, when you have a high bolt, and, and it's a question usually they, they some sergeants uh, ask me about that, uh, it, you have to consider the dynamic of the pupil. Even if you have 1,000, no, that, that's a matter. 1,000 sometimes it's, it's fine. Okay, I would prefer a lower, a lower size in the second eye, but it's the, the dynamic is fine. No problem, but the dynamic is not very good. You have to explain it, or you have to rotate. That's the, the first option uh, before explanation. Okay. And do you notice, in your experience, have you noticed um, uh, differences in racial uh, backgrounds of patients? In, in, in what in, do you mean? Um, patients from different racial backgrounds, different uh, ethnic yes. backgrounds. Mm -hmm. I, I, don't, I don't understand what you mean. So yeah. patients, say, from Asia versus patients who are European versus uh, different ethnic backgrounds, have you noticed um, di differences? Or do you approach, an, uh, say, an Asian eye differently than you would a Caucasian eye? Ah, oh, okay, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, okay, I, I didn't understand. No, usually, uh, no, I, I'm, I, don't, I don't have, a, so, um, usually a patient in Spain, uh, there are, uh, Caucasian, sometimes are, they came from South America, Central America, sometimes we have some Asiatic, but not too much, not too much. So I cannot say, uh, I, I cannot compare uh, that I always work in uh, Caucasians and sometimes there are some patients that uh, abroad, but uh, most of the time are Caucasian and even uh, even I, I don't remember too much black people. I I, I inserted a, a lens now. I inserted, but not 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 really not too much. So I cannot I cannot say I cannot answer that. That's probably that question. Okay. Any other comments or questions from the other attendees? Hey, this is this is Scott Barnes. Uh, Felix, I want to really thank you for this and really it's great uh, well two things happy to see all of my ottawa friends uh, it's been a while since i was up there in the clinic so i appreciate uh, you know your openness to us and i hope we can see each other again soon but felix it's great the concept of that he was talking about that anterior lens rise because that's not currently figured into the uh the nomogram and it does make a big difference because for the same white to white if you have a high lens rise, as you were explaining, you're going to get a shallower vault for the same ICL. If you have a more shallow or flat lens rise, it becomes uh, a different story. So it's wonderful that you're working on developing nomograms to help us. And this is what we've done in cataract surgery and in laser surgery as well, that smart doctors like yourself and experienced doctors would do uh, is just very helpful. So thank you so much. That was a great point to bring up. Thank you. Thank you very much for your words. Um, a question that came up, Felix, is uh, what uh, device is preferred to measure the white to white? Yeah, and really, uh, it's it's a uh, okay. The, the 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 standard is the OSCAN. The OSCAN is now going to disappear. Really, it's not going to to. To be fabric to be to be fabricated uh, further. So um, the Orscan is, is, is the reference. The Pentacam uh, it's uh, it's only 0 0.1 millimeters, about 0 0.1 millimeters more than the 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 Orscan. So it could be the reference. The problem is that white to white only difference in small eyes, medium eyes, and high and, and high eyes. Nothing else. Okay, so uh, uh, um, really, and we have four sizes really. So uh, that's the in we have one millimeter in the anterior chamber that 
of of of, uh, of uh, opportunity to, to to leave the the lands. Uh, the, one one thousand migrants it's is it, tolerated well tolerated in the vault the most of the times. Okay, so why to white really is the, we have to 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 go farther than white to white. I know I know that it's it's it's, it's difficult because. Uh, but uh, we need this this kind of OCT device, okay? But uh, uh, five years ago or ten years ago, never will think about uh, to have a OCT, retina OCT, macular OCT in the in the clinic. We have in all all the branches, in the, even the small branches, we have macular uh, OCT, and so on. so why not in 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 the next uh, years we will have the measurement. So I think uh, that we can progress for that. So uh, the most of the people are very, uh, uh, they are always asking, okay, I measure very well, so I, I, I repeat the measurement with the, with, the, with the caliper or with another, and so I don't know why I have a high ball or low ball, because really uh, the white to white only difference uh, 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 is very inconstant, because mm, sometimes it's, it's not, because it, mm, there are different devices, measuring the same okay so that's quite stupid because one measure is one measure okay if you do with oct of course uh, you are talking microns and microns in very exactly in the angle to angle so it's very it's very reproducible but not uh, occurs with the white to white so for me the oscan is the the standard okay is the uh, but the pentacan is fine you can measure 0.1 but uh, you really you have to work with your results, okay? And so it seems, another question that came up, it seems that yes, white to white is important, but then how should we be looking at the clear length rise and how should that factor in? Is there uh, a sort of way to predict what this, uh, this, the rise will be? Um, yeah. Yes. Uh, the, 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 most, the, the most important it will be the crystalline length rise. But even you see that we have, I'm working now, and my project is to do a dynamic formula, okay, like uh, Scott Van said, they, they, they are, they, they, like uh, they are working in, even in, in, in pseudo -fatic. okay. But a dynamic, because it's not the same, if you have a crystalline lens rise that builds, for example, 200 microns, from my resistance to meiosis, you have to consider in the bulk 200 microns is too much, for example. Or even there are some crystalline lens rise, 7% of crystalline lens rise. When you go from my resistance to meiosis, it's not built in even the opposite. It's decreasing. The, 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 the behavior is completely different. So it will be affect. The, the, so if we can measure the, the crystalline lens rise before, and we can introduce in a formula, and I'm working in that, probably we will predict much better the, 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 the vault. But uh, if we cannot measure the, the crystal in right because we don't have anterior chamber in OCT, okay, we can measure the anterior chamber depth and consider that. You have a big anterior chamber depth, the crystal in rise will be flat in the opposite. If you have a narrow one, you have a very pulsing crystal in rise. And if you introduce a lens, for example, in a narrow ICD, a very small lens, you will contact with the crystalline lens. Mm -hmm. But in the opposite, if you have a very uh, wide ICD, you implant a very high ICL, it will be very separate for the crystalline lens. The clinical repercussion, it depends on the same parameters, the dynamic of the pupil, the angles, but it, it will be a cure. So, we have to change our mind and to consider this because this is the way to to, to understand the world. Okay, I have a question. Uh, do you consider implanting a myopic ICL in patients with less than 2.8 millimeters, uh, I guess ACD, considering these patients will have a smaller uh, no. clearance rise? No, not usually, okay, but uh, if, if there is any I can do any exception, okay, but only an exception, okay. So uh, I can, and always I tell to the patient, and I write in the, in the consent form about that. I write, okay, you are out of or a criteria of of the, uh, uh, but uh, I can do sometimes, but I, I don't recommend it. Even for example, 
uh, in the in the hyperopic uh, ICL, I do not recommend the below three millimeters. Two point eight is not uh, even if it's approval for three millimeters. So but two point eight, I think it's fine. It's fine, uh, but I do not recommend it to go. Uh, in the less than that, that but you have to consider the cases. You have a, a okay a patient that is very uh, really he cannot tolerate the contact lens and he has a high myopia and he's a little bit uh, for example uh, his age is uh, or age is uh, over thirty for example why not why not but explaining to the patient that there is not demonstrated that the, the, there is a real problem with the, with the, with the, 2.8. 2.8 is it was arbitrary. It really is what it was a decision, but it not the most. It's it not really the conclusion of any study. Okay, and then uh, one other question respect to the uh, rise is when you measure the lens rise, what is your reference? Is it the rise from a horizontal line drawn from angle to angle or sulcus to sulcus? No, uh, uh, angle to angle. Sulcus to sulcus is not available with this. Uh, with this uh, device, okay, uh, they they are working the this uh, this switch short uh, OCT uh, are working to go further and to go deeper, and they, they sometimes it's possible to see the optics. Uh, okay, I, I don't uh, I didn't show you now, but uh, but uh, some some OCT you can see perfectly the optics uh, and some kind of iris. So uh, probably in the future they are working. Uh, I know. That they're working to go deeper. So, but now we can go to the to the anterior segment, just yes, to the to this angle to angle. So, the definition from Bikoff, and I recommend it. Uh, there is a beautiful, beautiful, uh, uh, and very clever uh, paper uh, uh, doing uh, did in, in 2006 from from Bikoff, uh, about. Uh, I recommend it. Yeah, you 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 read it. Uh, about uh, the, the the influence of crystalline lens rays in the safety of the of the facet lens, and the, he defined it as angle to angle the the line uh, from angle to angle the angle the to the to the to the, to the to the limit of the crystalline lens, right? So it's angle to angle. Okay. Another question is: Would accommodation change the vault? Hmm. That's true. That's true. Yeah, but it's it's uh, in a, I I've never I never uh, work about that because uh, I don't have time. <laughs> I have to do, <laughs> to do cyber. So really, really, that's the really reason because I I don't have time. And yeah. yeah okay. It, I think it, it, the accommodation moves the 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 ball very low. Okay. It moves it, okay, and even the 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 the, 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 the pupil dilatation with cycloplegic, but in different way, the accommodation moves the crystalline lens in a different way than the the the, the, the when when you when the, the external ambient light uh, uh, change, okay. So uh, it's not clinical clinically relevant because it, it, we, we, every time. And when we go out uh, to the to the out to the to the and you look at uh, in a sunny day and then enter in a in, in a in a dark room and then a lot of media so of movements of iris it's doing every day okay so if accommodation moves a little much less than 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 the the movement of the or really of the of the light of the pupil with the light. Uh, I didn't consider to study because I think it is not clinical clinical relevant. Okay, okay? but I don't, I cannot re answer it properly because I've never studied that. Okay, and when do you expect your dynamic formula to be available for us to use? <laughs> the, 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 for, I don't know. I, I'm working with two main Japanese are uh, curious <laughs> people. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, and, and, and I, we work together with German and, and Spanish. Are, are, are we are we want to, that we have something in mind? We all what directly to there. And German thinks quite a lot, and then, <laughs> and then I don't know Japanese. So sometimes it depends on them because I have a. So I propose some things. I, I'm quite happy because I propose some some. Um, Improvements in the in the in the in the in the screen and some different green and they give me, but uh, I will be 
be faster. So <laughs> cannot okay. uh, answer that. I think in a couple of years we will, we will have something very interesting. And the, this device, they they, they are. Uh, I started with the study with the with the light the external light, but they have introduced in the in the in the machine in the device, and they they are, they are now stopping that because they are doing the patent uh, for for that. Okay, so uh, they, they are not offering this, this advantage. This is very nice, very nice because you have the light inside, but they are not offering that because they are working in the patent. So I think it, we will have in the next year uh, or this, maybe this year, at the end of the year, we can see this in the market. So awesome. okay. I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> well, it's, um, it's, it's 6 p.m. our time here. Uh, if there's any no other questions, any other questions or comments out there? Well, thank you so much. I'm gonna uh, record this session. I'm gonna definitely have to re review it and look through your and put press pause and look through your, the, the many slides you've had done, uh, you put up. It's been very informative. I will have to uh, reassess at the, the way I look at the uh, vault and uh, may even reach out to you at certain points to get some uh, more um, more tips. But thank you very much, uh, Felix, for your time. My pleasure. I your appreciate work. it. Uh, very nice to have uh, met you this way and I look forward to meeting you in person one day um, okay. and again the, the, for those other attendees the meeting is has been recorded and I'll probably have it up uh, maybe later today on our YouTube channel okay all right thank well thank you so much have a great night thank you good night and, and thank you very much for the opportunity to, to share my my investigation or my, or my, my hobbies <laughs> yeah okay. very interesting Thank you Thanks for all your work and looking forward to uh, some, some more uh, interesting formulating dynamic uh, theories from you. Okay. Okay, bye-bye. Thank you.